So unfortunately, the Rail Talk Derby did not result in any of the three of us getting to the winner's circle, but Lauren Carlisle did get the win out of the three of us with I'm Very Busy running a really nice, fast closing second uh, behind Warm Heart in that race. Webslinger had a little bit of a tough trip. Integration had a little bit of a tough trip. We're still very proud of them. They both still ran very big figures. Uh, I just My takeaway from that race was that Ryan Moore is just an awesome, awesome rider. Yeah. And I don't know, it's, it's your American-centric thing. I would love to see him come and ride in America full-time at some point just to see how he stacks up with the American jockey colonies because he stole that race, honestly. Like, he's to me where – he was to me where integration should have been. Like, they should have right. had reverse positions. And he just – he got to jump on everybody. He's not scared to come up the rail. It was a terrific race, and it was – you know, I think a lot of those horses are going to win great stakes – uh, going through it out the rest of the season. But yeah, that was my takeaway. What did you think? No, it's definitely a springboard race, Joe. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Going into the race, we talked about just how impressive top to bottom the, uh, you know, the entries were. Um, and they didn't disappoint. You know, Ryan Moore, I think, is the story of the race, like, like you had mentioned, because he out jockeyed everyone else in the race. He out jockeyed the Eclipse, you know, award winning Irod Ortiz, his brother Jose, and, and the rest of the colony. And it wasn't even so much that he like, you know, in, in European racing, you have a little more room, the, the, the tracks, you know, are much wider. So you have the ability to kind of navigate a little bit easier. He cut to the rail. I mean, he, he, had, he had a choice and he saw everyone else kind of fanning out and he went right up the rail, reminiscent of the Breeders' Cup um, when he did, you know, when he did that also in, in, in the turf race. So Ryan Moore, to me, you know, you walk away from that race and you say, look, it's a great story. Warm heart won. Um, against the boys, against the older boys. Now she's being bred to triple crown winning, justified, mm -hmm. probably arguably, you know, the best uh, stallion in the country, if not maybe the top three in the world. Um, and, uh, and and she ended on a high note. So she ended up winning and now she's going to go to to justify and, and start her new career. And she not only beat the boys, but she beat them and broke the track record. Yeah. I mean, which was really, really impressive on, on top of everything else. Now, again, she was navigated perfectly mm -hmm. in order to, 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 you know, to hit the wire first, but she's that talented. I mean, she just deserved to be in the winner's circle, quite frankly. And this is coming from somebody that owned a horse in the race. If we didn't win or you didn't win, I definitely wanted her to win. Um, and then Lauren's horse. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, maybe we should have to go to Lauren's house for, uh, for the next episode <laughs> because she beat the both of us. Yeah. Listen, like, and it was just, it's, it, it turned out as it looked on paper, just a stellar field. Like integration ran fifth and got a 98 buyer. Web singer ran six and got a 96 buyer. Right. Like those numbers will win a lot of stakes. All grade ones, frankly, yeah. in most years. Yep. So, but it was, it was just a, a super, super field. And I think, you know, it turned out to be more interesting than the dirt race national treasure. Won the dirt race. You know, he was he was the best horse, I think, on paper going into the race. Even though we didn't mention him, I realized we went through the race last week. <laughs> I think no. that, that was by design by me. I don't know why you were <laughs> skewing him. I, I was talking about how I forgot who was in the race. Right, so I, right. I proved it by not mentioning the favorite. Um, so he got a 105 buyer. He's, I guess, is like the leader in the clubhouse in the handicap division. But it's just, there's nobody really to write home about. No. Uh, I thought Hoist the Gold ran a really good race um, for Dallas Stewart. So I'm happy for him. But yeah, anybody out there, anybody got like a four-year-old, five-year-old that they're excited about, like enter them in some big races. Cause like, there's really nobody to be scared of this year, it seems. No, and, and I was happy to see Senior Buscador run the way he did because mm -hmm. there's a horse that is off the beaten path. He's not he's not trained by a superstar, by, by a mega trainer. He's not owned by, you know, by, by the, the big names in the industry. And, uh, and you know, Junior Alvarado, who, who rode the horse, isn't a big name in Florida. He's mm -hmm. doing really well in his own career, um, but he's not, when you say who are the top five um, jockeys in the, in the country, Junior Alvarado is not in that in that conversation. So the fact that he just kept riding the horse and riding the horse, and even though National Treasure looked like he was going to win, um, you know, even more impressively than, than he did at the end, and galloping out those first fifty yards after the after the wire, you can make the case that Senior Buscador was was the best horse in the race. Yeah, and he's just his style is such that that Gulfstream track is always going to play against, against that him. and play yeah. towards the strengths of a horse like National Treasure. I love Senior Buscador because I wrote a story. Back when I was at the TDN a couple years ago right. on Joe Peacock, the owner slash breeder and the mayor, the desert god mayor has like five stakes winners from five falls to race. And I wrote it back, back when the senior Buscador won the springboard mile and was right. like going to be a derby contender. And then he got injured and had to miss a triple crown season. Right. And he came back and had run some like so-so races, but he's really, really come around this year. He obviously won the San Diego at Del Mar last year. He ran pretty well in the Breeders' Cup. Like he's had 
he's, he's come around in a really nice way. And like you say, like, it's nice to see those small operations step up and be able to win or run big right. in some big races. And yeah, it was an interesting story because it was the last horse that Joe Peacock Jr. bred with his dad. So oh, wow. that was like, that, that meant a lot to them. So we're, yep. we're I mean, you know, I love to see horses like that run big. Yep. And yeah, if he gets into some ra- into some races with you know a little bit more pace on a little bit fairer of a track, mm-hmm. he's going to win some some big pots this year. He is, and, and the other thing, since we're talking about um, you know forgotten names and and maybe names that are out of the limelight, how about Mineshaft? I mean, here's a horse that you know historically is one of the most solid stallions around. Doesn't get the book of mares because he's just not sexy and he's older. Um, but he had two horses hit the board mm-hmm. in the in the uh, in the Pegasus, and you know the fact that he had two horses in the field is is you know enough to kind of sit up and take notice but um he's still a bargain i think he's like at ten thousand dollars he's the man he was like one of my favorite handicap horses growing up like i started watching racing in 03 and he was like big in 03 and 04 right and you know just one it was one of those horses that showed up every single time and, and just ran huge and you know like you say he wasn't he wasn't flashy but man was he rock solid and it's it's great to see him his influence still being there 20 plus years later. Right. Um, I mean, unless you got anything else to say about those races, there is some news about the Pegasus and a similar. Let's go to that. Similar that's, that's more important to the than Pegasus. I can say. Yep. <laughs> going forward. You, you know, John, this, this, this is a little microcosm of the show. John's got his notes here. This, this is just me going off the top of my head, but he's an A student. Um, so he's got plenty. He's got plenty to say. It's just because I don't, I don't have a memory like you do. I don't have a memory of a 35 year old anymore. So it's all the weed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not arguing about that either. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so during the Pegasus broadcast, Belinda Stronic came on and was talking about having a new event similar to the Pegasus out in California called the California Crown. Now, I don't know when exactly it's going to start, but it's going to be a similar idea with a big handicap race with a huge purse, basically just to kind of have an event day at Santa Anita, similar to what the Pegasus is at Gulfstream. And I had so so multiple thoughts about this. Like the the I think the Pegasus has done a good job, you know, getting people to the track mm-hmm. in Miami where there's a lot to do. So I think the idea is like L.A. Hollywood trying to stand out like that. But my feeling is, you know, with all the issues going on in Santa Anita, having trouble filling fields, and just very uncertain future for Southern California, California racing in general, like. Is that the best use of resources, is my question, to put all the purse money into just one big day, especially since Santa Anita gets the Breeders' Cup, like, pretty much every year, at least every, every other year. year. So they already have that event that if you market it right, people will come out from L.A. So, I don't know, I have mixed feelings about that. What do you think? Well, I think it's a case of, you know, looking at something and, and seeing it as a success and then saying, if this works, then if we replicate it and do it again somewhere else at a venue, that it will work just as well. And I'm not a big believer in that in this case. Um, I don't think sequels ever do as well. I mean, you could talk about Deadpool 2 probably being the best sequel out there, maybe outside of Godfather 2, but that's a whole other show. But otherwise, I, I think that, that sequels don't hold up um, and that basically this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to replicate this West Coast now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and from my understanding, um, you know, even though, and you, you can say that, that the, this weekend in Miami was really successful. There was forty-seven million dollars that were that was wagered um, on Pegasus Day, mm-hmm. which is incredible. But I've heard, you know, that even though they have you know, tens of millions of dollars um, wagered that day, they lose on average six to seven million dollars on Pegasus Day, and it's because of the appearance fees and because of all the different you know security they have to put in and all the things they have to they have to ramp up in order to make it work. So to me. If you're if you're doing this to highlight Santa Anita, then that's 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 fine. Okay, if you're doing it because Belinda Stronic wants to have a second party, um, then then you have to look at it and say, okay, is that worth five to seven million dollars of loss again um, to do it to do it again? Um, you know, I remember there was a, a really bad movie called Reindeer Games uh-huh. that uh, Ben Affleck was in. And uh, at one point in time, they were they were talking about, you know, one, one of the thugs was like, you know, I went to business school and uh, I think that, did you know that 90% of all sales for toys is during the, the Christmas season? I think we should have Christmas too <laughs> and July and try to, re, you know, try to do that. I think this is exactly the same idea. It's like, if it works, then let's just do it again. Right. It, but it, it, then you lose the nuance of it. You lose the newness of it, I guess yes. you should say. Um, the uniqueness. And and it's a great show. It's a great day mm-hmm. of racing. They, I, I think... 
you know, from Gulfstream standpoint, top to bottom, the races were really, really good. Yeah. I mean, they were, they were great betting races. There were some great intrigue in, in a lot of the races. You can make a case that maybe the breeder, I'm sorry, the, the Pegasus itself was maybe like the third or fourth best race right. on the card. Yeah. Um, yet they had, it was a full house. They sold out, you know, again, almost $50 million worth of, uh, worth of wagering going on. But at the end of the day, if you lose $6 million, then why would you do it again other than just to be able to say, hey, here's our signature day? Yeah, no doubt. And I agree. Like this is, you know, we were ragging on the Pegasus dirt race, which it wasn't that great. has gotten down in quality every year. But the card is is great. It's a yeah. great day of racing and it's needed, especially like in kind of a racing wasteland on the calendar. You know, right. there's really nothing else of note that goes on between the Breeders' Cup and like the first or like the last major round of Derby preps. Right. So it's needed. It gave us something to talk about. It gave, you know, people, you know, Horse Lake Integration gave him a race to run in, you right. know, because mm -hmm. after the Hill Prince, it was like, there's really nothing else on the calendar until the Derby Day turf right. race. So it's, I think it's a good springboard for the rest of the year, like you were saying. Yep. So overall, I think the card is, is great and much needed. It's just that, you know, the dirt race has fallen off because of the Saudi Cup. And it's, right. and it's also just the fun a function of horses not sticking around, mm -hmm. you know, because it's just, it. you know, the idea was that this would be one last hurrah for horses before they go off the stud. But it's right. like, that was, it was one thing when the purse was $12 million. Now that it's $3 million, like, are you really going to risk that horse right. right before they go to stud for a $3 million purse? Like, he's right. worth way more in the breeding shed. Right. But yeah, overall, it was, you know, I think it was a great day of racing. And. I just, yeah, I don't think it's as easily replicable as like, right. let's just let's take this, let's, right. let's take bikini, bikini bottom and move right. it over here. Yeah, right, take exactly. The whole town and move it. But, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's like it's like when people try to replicate our podcast. It's exactly. Just, you, know, you can't don't, do it. You don't, don't, don't even screw with it. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work with other talking heads. It certainly doesn't work with other editors and, and producers for sure. Um, we don't even want to, we don't want to try. We don't even want to right. think about that. Like, <laughs> you know, our bread is buttered. <laughs>